Welcome to Rascal Apiary, and today we're going to step into inspection with me on our Hulk Hive. And it had a lot of unique things that I feel like beginner beekeepers are going to see their first year and be concerned about or just have questions about. So let's get into it. So let's talk about what you first see when you get into your hive. You're going to have your inner cover here, and what you want to see is a lot of bees on that if the hive is really healthy. If it's a newly installed hive, it's not going to be as many bees on top. However, there should be a few interested, and by a few I mean like maybe 10 to 20, and you should be happy. If you're in your second year, you should be looking like how I'm showing here. I've used my hive tool and I've gone ahead and pried both of the frames apart and lifted and you'll see I have fingers on both ends of the uh, frame and your frame should look like this where there's honey on the outsides and brood pattern on the inside. If it's an end frame, uh, which unfortunately this one was, uh, it should just be either honey or pollen, uh, nectar, bee bread. It should be resources is what I'm getting at. Take a look at the screen down in the bottom of the cell. You'll see a little grain of rice, and that's going to be your egg. Now, as a beginner beekeeper, when you're looking, if you see one egg per cell, then you're golden. You don't even have to find your queen. Unless you see something else going on in the hive that you're really concerned about, you can see this frame, see the eggs, look at the pattern, and go, I'm done. Put it back together and walk away. If you're not so lucky to find eggs right away or you have trouble seeing them, here's some of the other things you can see. Bees, of course. You're going to see pollen, and you can tell that this one's pollen because it looks like powder. Um, it doesn't have any sort of shine to it. We'll talk about bee bread in a minute and how that's different. The other thing you can see here is larva. They're the little worm looking guys. That's what the eggs turn into. This is also a good sign that you have a queen. Um, and then you may notice that the other cells look like they're empty, but if you have your back to the sun as you're looking, you'll see a shine off of them as well, and they're full of nectar. Other things you can see in the hive is capped honey, not to be confused with worker brood. Some bee frames will make them look very similar especially as the comb gets darker uh, darker comb just means that it's older and by old i mean years old we have some comb out there that's three years old it's pretty dark it's hard to see um it's hard to see the eggs in the cells and when they cap the honey it looks more brownish than this beautiful white that's here on this picture uh, the other thing you'll see here is what looks like pollen, but that's not actually pollen. Well, it is, but it's not. So the bees will pack pollen in the cell, and then they will put nectar on top of it, soaking that pollen. So that's called bee bread, and that bee bread is what's used to feed the bees in their younger state as, a, you know, egg, larva, and then pupae. I also want to point out the importance of teamwork when you're out there uh, inspecting hives as a beginner beekeeper or even second, third, fourth year. Oh, uh, we still go yeah, out okay. as husband and wife and okay. we inspect uh, these on. hives. Okay. My wife will take okay. pictures. Um, oh, right there. It helps that I bought her a brand new camera that she's super excited about. But that's part of beekeeping and that's part of keeping it fun is finding uh, somebody to do it with that can help you uh, see things that maybe you could. As you're getting into these hives, try and keep a pattern on how you look at each frame. Make sure you do a search pattern with your eyes as you look at one side. And then as you'll see, I lift the frame a little bit higher and I check just that bottom edge for any swarm cells. And here's the queen. She's going to be moving quick on the frame, and you're going to need to just be patient. And that's why I suggest just looking for eggs 
and once you find them you know you're good. When you're looking at a frame that looks like this and you're trying to find your queen, a tall tale sign that your queen is not going to be there is if it's just bee bread and honey or nectar and capped honey. Um, the end frames are typically does not have the queen and it's typically the center of your hive box is where your queen's going to be and that's also where you're going to find your egg. So if your wax ends up looking like this where it's odd shapes and you're wondering why your bees aren't pulling it all the way through, that is not a sign for concern or a cause for concern. What they're doing there is making little tunnels so that they can easily get from one side to another and uh, oxygen can pass through the hive easily. Now it's a different story if you're seeing weird comb inside your frames where it's making your frames stick together such as you physically have to cut the frames apart then that's bad. That's your job as a beekeeper to make sure that they fill out the frame completely and nice and straight. So just reevaluate how your frames are set up in your hive and cut those open. Make sure you have a mason jar to put the extra wax into the mason jar and then you can go make a candle or you can melt it down and uh, set up new frames for the next set of bees or just the next box you put on that hive. So as you're putting your hive back together or putting another box on or just opening your hive in general, you may see this burr comb. That's the extra wax that's on top of the frames. Now, typically you won't see this, but as your bees start running out of room, they're gonna start putting wax wherever. Um, remember, there's a point in the bees' work life span where they go, okay, I'm going from cleaning bee to now I'm going to be a wax bee for three days and I'm going to just, you know, use my wax glands and make comb. So if they don't have room for that, boom, that's where it's going. It's going everywhere except for where you want it. So take your um, container and put your wax, like scrape that off, put your wax in that and just collect it. And there's no harm, no foul. It's just kind of a sign that you need to add some room. But that uh, that wax can later be used for candles again or anything else that you want to use it for. Here I'm demonstrating how to properly flip a frame. So it's called the book method. You're looking at your one side of the frame and then you're turning your frame vertically and then flipping it like a page in a book and then bringing it back to a horizontal and once you have it in that horizontal plane, then you're able to look at the other side and then you just repeat the process backwards and you can put the frame right back into the hive. And we do this so that the wax does not fall out of the frame. Let's talk about what we covered so far. We opened the hive, we found some eggs, we looked at larvae, we found capped brood, we found the queen, we found capped honey, we found nectar, bee bread, we assessed the bee's health as far as we didn't see anything out of the ordinary, we assessed the population because there was a lot, we evaluated the if there was any pest sort of problems like small hive beetle or wax moth, and we put all the frames back in order and then we went ahead and put the inner cover back on in the top and we put a cinder block on top of the outer cover just so if a, a deer comes by and wants to scratch itself on the hive the hives not tipping over or a bear comes by um, if a bear comes by he, he's gonna get in that cinder blocks not helping but any any other sort of strange uh, phenomenon happen wind tree fall there's a chance that that cinder block will keep that hive from tipping over. Um, we also, throughout the video, you may have seen that I reached down um, in front of me, but in between the camera and the hive. I have in the uh, hive stand two little uh, pieces of metal that stick out that's, you know, you can buy at any hardware store that screw in and 
they hold my frames. So my frames are right there at my knees. I wear um, coveralls most of the time underneath my, my uh, bee jacket or just long pants so that the bees don't bother me. And they typically won't come off those frames anyway. And they don't get agitated unless, of course, I knee them or do hit them in any sort of way. But that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. And leave us a comment. I try and respond to every single comment. My wife tries to beat me to them as much as possible. So leave some comments so we can keep the competition going. It keeps beekeeping fun. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Give us some feedback.